All right, here we go. You're watching the 49ers Report by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Senior. Hope all of you are having a fantastic weekend. We have a fantastic show in store today. Here's what we have coming up. Does Debo Samuel want $25 million per year on his next contract? Are the 49ers going to sign edge rusher Kamoko Turway? We talked about him briefly last week on the show. But first, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I want to see how quickly we can get the 60,000 subs. We're a little more than 140 people away. So make sure you subscribe to the channel right now by hitting that red subscribe button down below or go to youtube.com slash 49ers TV. Debo Samuel with his contract. Did he make his message known to the San Francisco 49ers that he wants $25 million per year and nothing less than that? Let's dive into the latest on Debo Samuel. So Ricardo Young is an entrepreneur based out of Miami. He's friends with Debo Samuel. He posted this picture with Debo Samuel over the weekend with the caption that said, if it ain't $25 million per year, we don't want it. Now, Debo Samuel replied to that Instagram post by saying slime with the snake emoji. Slime, according to Urban Dictionary, means somebody is cool. So he didn't say, yeah, facts, $25 million or nothing. San Francisco, you better bring your negotiating tactics to the table because I don't want, any, want anything less than $25 million. But when you take a look at the highest paid wide receivers in the NFL, it would make sense why Debo Samuel has that contract number at that threshold because if he were to sign for 25 mil average annual value it would immediately make him the fourth highest paid wide receiver in the NFL after Tyreek Hill was traded from the Kansas City Chiefs to the Miami Dolphins he signed that new contract and he's making 30 million dollars per season Devontae Adams same thing when he was traded to the Las Vegas Raiders now making 28 million dollars even after putting ink to paper on that contract with the Las Vegas Raiders. DeAndre Hopkins, 27 plus. Then there's a little bit of a fall off by about $7 million to DJ Moore, as well as Keenan Allen. And when you sign a contract that will pay you $25 million per year, it goes to show you just the impact that Debo Samuel has been able to have on the football field on the Niners offense. And he wants to be paid as such. And immediately it vaults him into the top five of the highest paid wide receivers per year on an annual basis. So as we continue to unpack all of this, would you pay Debo Samuel $25 million per season? P for pay, O for overpay. This is the pinned comment on today's video. So if you get hit with that YouTube ad break, just scroll on down and get your votes in. Now, this is the Debo Samuel contract extension projection that I put together a few weeks ago. This was after Devontae Adams had signed that deal, and then Tyree Kill gets traded, and then Stephon Diggs makes it be known that he wants a new deal, and now Buffalo is paying him about $20 million per season. Debo Samuel, my contract extension projection for him, I think he's going to get something in this neighborhood. Spotrack also released their contract projection. It's somewhat similar to mine. They're probably just looking at mine and being like, wow, this guy's really smart. Five years, $120 million, $24 million average annual value, guaranteed money of 65. Now, if the Niners offer Debo this, according to Ricardo Young and Debo, maybe they're not going to sign that contract because they want $25 million per year. A couple of things with Debo. First of all, when you talk about the player Debo Samuel, He's incredible, and the impact that he had on this offense last year was absolutely profound, and his ability to impact games through the air and on the ground is like something that we've never seen before. The dude invented a new position called wide back, and any time the Niners needed a big play, they'd find a way to put the ball in his hands, and he'd take it to the crib as an absolute game breaker. There's also this when you're talking about the average annual value of Debo and some of these other wide receivers as the wide receiver market continues to really just explode. The salary cap is going to continue to rise and go up. So while $25 million per year seems like a lot for a non-quarterback now, it actually could be a bargain in the future if the market continues continues to expand. There is a concern that I have for Debo, and this has to be a concern on the Niners side of these negotiations. How does Debo age playing both wide receiver and running back, especially if they continue to have his usage rate as high as it was last year? And Debo Samuel, since getting drafted out of South Carolina, has been somewhat injury prone, hasn't played a full season once in his NFL career, and has missed 17 games total. So that is a concern for San Francisco because if they're paying him almost upper echelon quarterback money, 
then they want him to be consistently on the field. And will the 49ers hold using Debo Samuel as a running back in addition to wide receiver against him in negotiations, therefore not paying him a lot of money? Is what Debo Samuel gives you worth $25 million per year? Yes. And last year went to show you just how valuable he is to this football team outside of quarterbacks. I thought he was the most dangerous non-quarterback weapon in the National Football League last year. And remember, for Debo Samuel to get impatient, this is how the 49ers do business. When George Kittle signed that contract extension, when Fred Warner signed his a year ago, those deals were not done in April. Those deals were done later in the calendar year in training camp. So Debo, you're going to get paid at some point. Be patient, and I think the Niners are going to fork over around $25 million per year. They understand your value, and they're going to compensate you as such. 49ers Report content is also on Rumble, a brand new partner here at Chat Sports that we're really excited about. Free and uncensored content on Rumble as well, and more exclusive 49ers Report videos that you can't find on YouTube. Now, the bosses have been in my ear, and they said, Chase, the 49ers Report on Rumble has 280 subscribers. If you don't get to 300 subscribers with this video, we're canceling the 49ers Report, we're taking down this channel, and lastly, you are fired. I love my job, I love the Niners, I love talking football every day, I don't want to get fired. So go to rumble.com slash 49ers TV, help your boy out, subscribe to us over there for exclusive Niners content, and let's get to 300 subscribers by the end of the day. To Kamoko Ture now. This coming from Field Yates back a couple days ago. 49ers hosted him on a visit. The free agent pass rusher coming off a career high five and a half sacks in 2021 with the Indianapolis Colts. A 2018 second round pick out of Rutgers who got off to a slow start in his NFL career. Then in year two, he suffered a broken foot and that kind of curtailed and derailed his NFL career to a certain degree, but the production has started to increase the last couple of years, especially last year in 2021 when he played all 13 games, or 13 games total, uh, five and a half sacks, five tackles for loss, eight quarterback hits, and one fumble force. Kamoko Ture last year as a rotational uh, pass rusher in those 13 games, so he did miss a little bit of time, that's my B, uh, was really, really good. And this is a 49ers organization that prioritizes having depth at the edge rusher spot because they like to rotate those edge rushers in and out of the game to keep guys like Nick Bosa fresh so that Nick Bosa can go on to have a 15 and a half sack season. But also when you have a defensive line that also features Nick Bosa and his crazy skills as a pass rusher, it allows other guys to really succeed and flourish. We saw it with Samson Ebucom back half of the year. We saw it with Arden Key. We've seen it a couple of times with players over time, especially this past year with a player like Eric Armstead. So Nick Bosa really elevates everybody else and it allows guys like Kamoko Ture when they're making pretty uh, attractive salaries in terms of average annual value to really have a profound impact on the football team. That's why I'm a huge proponent of this signing if they make it. But why haven't they signed Kamoko Ture just yet? Check out the last three teams in salary cap space in the National Football League. The 49ers dead last, 32nd in the NFL with only $369,000 plus of open salary cap space. It's almost as if you could have cleared $26 million off the cap if you traded away Jimmy Garoppolo. Instead, he's still on the roster and you don't have any money to devote to other resources to improve your team. That's a little bit of a problem. Obviously, there's a roster move that has to be made or contract restructures to a Jimmy Ward or an Eric Armstead that have to take place to free up some cash, especially leading into the 2022 NFL draft. And hopefully some money can be cleared so that they can sign Kamoko Ture to this defensive line as well. When you scout the player, a little bit better than Arden Key, uh, or excuse me, he's a better Arden Key replacement than a guy like Kerry Hyder. Kerry Hyder, I think, is going to be able to have a five-sack season, but Kamoko Ture, he's still in his mid-20s. 
He's still young. He's younger than Kerry Hyder for sure. So you lose Arden Key, who really was good last year, um, six and a half sacks as a rotational pass rusher, and you replace him with a guy coming off a career high five and a half sacks as he's starting to ascend, is still young, and can play on the opposite side of Nick Bosa. That's why I'm a big fan of this signing, and I can't continue to say that enough. Pass rush percentage as well. Check out where Ture checks in. Right behind guys like Nick Bosa, who had 15 and a half sacks last year, and Jadavion Clowney. A 13.4% pass rush percentage, meaning he can get home a lot. I've said this a lot about sack total numbers. I think you look at them kind of like a win-loss record for a pitcher. It doesn't tell the whole story. A pitcher can go 0-20 throughout the entire Major League Baseball season, but if he has a sub-3 ERA, he's one of the best starting pitchers in the league, right? The wins don't always tell the full story with a pitcher, and sacks don't always tell the full story with a pass rusher. Quarterback hits, quarterback pressures, a huge indication and an indicator of how good a pass rusher is. And when you look at the analytics, Kamoko Ture pass rush percentage, pretty appealing there. It was also a higher pass rush percentage than Arden Key and Samson Ebucom. So a little bit earlier, I had hinted at Ture being a better Arden Key replacement than a guy like Kerry Hyder. He had a higher pass rush percentage and got home a lot as compared to an Arden Key or a Samson Ebucom. Defensive linemen with the Niners, they always seem to find a way to break out. That's thanks in part to the scheme. That's thanks in part to Nick Bosa being on that defensive line. It's also thanks in part to this dude to my right, Chris Kosarek, the defensive line coach for San Francisco. When you look at this picture here, he just looks like a football guy. And he has been breeding excellent, fabulous, fantastic pass rushers during his entire time with San Francisco since coming over from the Detroit Lions and previously to that with the Miami Dolphins. This guy is a guru in coaching up defensive linemen, and that's another reason why he gets his hands on Kamoko Ture. Man. That could be a really, really good signing for San Francisco. Grade Ture as a player for me from 1 to 100, EA Sports. It's in the game. That's that Madden saying. Uh, legendary. And this is the Madden scale. So grade him on the Madden scale for me from 1 to 100. Let me know how good you think he is. And if you've never heard of him before, you can let me know in the comments section as well. Also, before we hop on out of here on this fine Sunday, first people to give me a follow on either Instagram and Twitter, first five of you, I will give you a shout out on the show on Monday. That means that you made it up to this point in the video. You support the 49ers support. You're making today's show a part of your day. I greatly appreciate you for that. I wanna show you some love in the process as well. So first five people to follow me on both Twitter and Instagram, I'll give you a follow. You don't have to follow me on both, but that'd be awesome as well. Maybe it's a double shout out for you. Appreciate all of you for watching today's show. Don't forget to subscribe. How quickly can we get to 60,000 subscribers? We're getting there for sure. Let's ride, Niner Gang.